This is the sort of landscape that Genghis would have recognized. These pastures are pretty much in the middle of Mongolia and it's also very near where he was born. This is the heart of Genghis's homeland. It's also the heart of a revolution. Genghis had destroyed his enemies, united his allies, created a nation. This was quite extraordinary because it was the first time this had ever happened in Mongol history, the unity of all the tribes. And it was here that his people acknowledged him as supreme leader. In 1206, he united his clans, founded his nation, and was granted a unique title. We don't really know what it meant because it fell out of use very soon afterwards but it probably meant the most powerful king, Genghis Khan. The secret history explained the rise of Genghis. The purpose is obviously not to show him as a mass murdering psychopath, but to give a far more nuanced approach to his leadership. It's like a sort of a manual of leadership. It's as if he was a CEO explaining how to run an empire. This is a guide to the future. This was a man who had the insight to see that if you're going to administer an empire forever, you need to have taxes, you need records, you need writing. It is symbolized by the scroll that he's holding. would have been raised like these guys. He would have been used to riding, to milking, to scaring off wolves even, and strapped into the saddle until he knew how to ride at the age of three or four. <laughs> they were expected to die, but they did not die. And Genghis was injected with a great sense of insecurity. And for the rest of his life, he was determined to re-establish that lost sense of security. This is a royal gear, the sort of thing that Genghis would have had with him on his campaign. It's 35 foot across, it's 15, 20 foot high, and he needed the space for military briefings. But what he couldn't have known is that the throne from which he gave his orders was in fact about to become his deathbed. Some people say that he was suffering from an old arrow wound. Some people say he'd just fallen from his horse. One of his queens may have poisoned him. But I think there's another explanation. There was typhoid in the army, and I think that's what he was suffering from. Whatever it was, it was all over in a week. The lakeside here has been transformed into a shrine to Genghis Khan. And it's proof, if you like, that Genghis is alive and well and living in the hearts of Mongolians today. We're walking towards the main part of the shrine. There's Genghis himself in the middle, blue, blue scarves leading us down to the lake, which commemorates his coronation. And up the other side, a sign on the hillside written in the old vertical script that he introduced, Chinggis Khan.